This is Mary Marie. She's a reproduction flat cloth doll made from an original artifact in the Grovian Doll Museum's collection. And she has a wardrobe that I've created from wonderful patterns by the very talented Nikki Burley using materials and trims from the Carmel Doll Shop Boutique. She's a very fun little doll to sew for and it really doesn't take too much time or effort or fabric to make these cute little costumes. So I hope you enjoy her. I'm going to show you how to make this cute little doll, Mary Marie. She is a reprint of an actual uncut, um, much larger, I think she's about 20 inches, uh, artifact in the Grovian Doll Museum's collection. And Nikki Burley has done these wonderful little patterns for her. And we're gonna make some of these up in fabrics from the Carmel Doll Shop Boutique and show you um, how versatile these little patterns can be. Um, the doll, in terms of the flat uh, printed cloth, which I think is color fast and really beautiful saturated colors, um, comes with the patterns in this little booklet and the patterns all have great instructions as well. But we're going to be using different fabrics and I'm going to be showing you sort of the, again, the instructions are, are wonderful and really well done. I'm just gonna be showing you how, um, how to do this um, in a couple of series of, of small videos. So uh, we will get started and I hope you have fun with this one. She's a great little travel doll. Um, she's, uh, she's really a cutie and I've already made one for myself in a couple of costumes and it's really a lot of fun and pretty easy to put together. So we're moving on to actually assembly now and I just want to show you a couple of things. Um, Nikki's patterns uh, recommend that you cut out each of the front and the back pieces on the sewing line, or rather on the on the cut line. Um, it's You can do that if you want, it's really up to you. I just tend to sort of do a rough cut um, on all the sides, except I am trimming to the seam allowance at the on the front only where the boot, uh, where the boot is. And I'm going to show you why we do that. So uh, the, there are actually four pieces. There's a front and there's a back, and then there are these um, boot fronts. So what you're gonna do with the boot fronts is you're gonna carefully align them and sew just on the inside edge of that sole with a tiny running back stitch. And then you're going to use a turning tool or whatever else you've got, and you're going to press that seam open. And then very carefully aligning front still with wrong uh, right sides to right sides you're going to run another seam across the tip of the boot then you're going to turn that out making sure that you get the, the points of your of your toes pretty crisp and you're going to find the center of that boot front and you're going to mark it again this will be turned inside out uh, or right side out you're going to mark that in the center and then you're going to take some uh, tiny, uh, tiny scissors and being careful not to clip into the actual um, boot top itself. You're going to make some tiny little clips here to make it easier to sew this down. You're going to do tiny clips all across the curve of the front and then you're going to take a clip here at the bottom of the sole and here at the bottom of the sole. And I'll show you why you need to do that. So what you're going to do is you're going to match the front or the top of that boot um, with the, uh, I guess, the, the, the center of the, of the boot itself. And you're gonna sew that in position and you're going to be sewing it from the, the, this, uh, this point here where the boot leather begins all the way up and all the way around. And you're gonna make sure that you are using um, anchoring stitches at your beginnings and your ends and a tiny running back stitch. Uh, Nikki recommends that you sew this together from the center to the um, 
to the end and then again from the center to the end because it makes it easier to control but however you you probably aren't even going to want to pin this it's just something that it's so small you're just going to use your finger to keep it in place and you know just keep checking that your you know your seam looks good as you're doing it um, but this is probably the trickiest thing with this little kit um, it's uh it's very easy to do as long as you can just do again this running back stitch so now we're ready to put front and back together and start sewing but before we do that i'm just going to say that you're going to want to keep two areas open for stuffing and for turning um, one is going to be on the hip and that's going to be approximately an inch and one's going to be at the top of the head and that's going to be approximately two inches again all of this is in the instructions and her instructions are great um, you're going to put right side to right side and this is a little trick <clears throat> that i found i don't know if you guys if this is actually not a light box it's something that you use just to make sure that you're getting enough sunlight during the day um i uh actually have like a vitamin d deficiency so i need to take supplements and also <clears throat> obviously when you're spending all your time inside sewing that's what happens but anyway um, no, I'm not inside all day sewing, but I am inside all day in front of my computer for work. So what you're going to do, and um, before we, we fit these together, is you're going to take a Frixion pen and you're just going to draw a little U here um, at the inside of the arms, but the sides of the neck and between her legs. And that's just going to make it easier um, to turn. You know, if we were doing these in a little point, you might get a little pucker there or something else that you just don't want. So. I use this light box really because it's a great way of aligning, making sure that you're aligning your two pieces. And they should really be like a mirror of one another. Um, the Grovian's done such a good job in cre recreating this, this pattern. So I might just like start at one place. And here I would want to pin it together just to sort of keep it um, aligned. You know, and you're just going to work your way around that, making sure that you're aligning that dark outer edge. You might need to do a little bit of stretching, a little bit of adjusting. That's fine. She's cloth and she can take it. So I'm just going to show you here. So you can see your line is pretty much solid on this side. I mean, I have obviously I have to spend more time in doing this, but I'm just showing you as a little example. So. Um, Nikki recommends, let me turn this off, Nikki re recommends that you use a couple of different color threads to sew her together. Um, you know, you can use white for her, where her under things are, a dark brown for the head, and maybe like a beige for her body, brown for the, the, the boots. I'm going to use um, sort of a medium uh, beige for the body, and then I'll go in and do dark brown for the head. But again, you can do whatever you want. Just make sure that where you start and you stop, <coughs> that you take some anchoring stitches. Again, we're going to be doing this in this very small um, uh, back stitch, running back stitch for strength. And then, you know, I'm just going to remark these just so I can remember my openings. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm going to continue to pin this. I'm going to sew my, before I do that, I'm going to sew my other boot front <clears throat> in position. Then I'm going to sew it together and I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you um, how you might be able to insert a wire armature into the doll. So she's a little bit uh, poseable and a little bit more sturdy. So let me <clears throat> start sewing and I will come back and show you the next steps. I just wanted to show you a few things here. We've um, sewn with a very small back stitch. I'll show you a little bit of that in a bit. Keeping within the dark outer line that runs around her head and her body and her legs. So with any luck, when we turn this inside out, you're not gonna see that line because we've sewn within it. Um, one thing that's a little bit tricky here are the boots. So because we've sewn the front of the boot onto the leg, you know, it kind of spreads out a little bit. What I do, just so we're not sewing into that when we have these edges meet to keep it away from the seam line, 
put a little tacking stitch there. You're gonna take that out when you turn it inside out anyway, so it won't matter, but I think it helps you to sort of keep the, this away from the edges so you don't mistakenly catch it. So I'm gonna show you a little bit of the back stitching. Let's see if I can get close enough here. Okay, so it's a really simple stitch. You want it to be very small though. Well, it's probably like a millimeter or so. <laughs> it's a kind of a strange angle to be sewing. So it's just a running back stitch, tiny little stitches keeping within the line of the outline. Um, one thing also just to mention, in Nikki's instructions, she talks about putting a dart in the chin and you can see it here. Um, when I made my first one, I didn't put the dart in and it managed to work. I'm not quite sure if that was just a happy accident or not, but I'm gonna try it without the dart in this one. Um, I think it was just the way that I stuffed it. So let's, um, you know, let's hold off on that for now. You can always mark it with Frixion if you want the dart and then take it out. But there's just something about the dart that I think, I don't know, it just makes her sort of feel like she's got a little bit of a double chin. Um, and it's nice to see her little chin there. So I'm going to finish stitching this up until the point. Oh, and one other thing was, um, I'm only, I only did this just to show you, you know, how you would trim it out, but now you've just gone and you followed sort of like that general um, holding line that uh, was on the printed pattern uh, for your seam allowance. And then you're like clipping into the underarms next to the, the neck. You're, clip, you're gonna clip between um, her legs. You're gonna clip any place there's a little bit of a, a curve like at the, C, at the waistline. Um, just so it'll make it easier when you turn. And you might even take a tiny little clip um, at the thumb marks and at the wrists. So I'm gonna finish this up and then turn her inside out and show you the next step. So here she is, turned inside out and all of her little areas have been sort of poked out with a smaller turning tool. Actually, I used a, a hemostat to um, pull her um, legs through her head <laughs> and her arms, and it just really makes it much easier um, to do. So um, one thing I did fail to mention to you is that there, you know, I would not trim where you have your open areas. I would not trim the seam allowance down to this edge because it might fray and it might make it more difficult to work with. What I do recommend doing is you might want to turn this in. Well, you can do it, I guess, a couple of different ways. You might want to turn it in and lightly baste it in place because you're going to be stuffing through this and it's going to get a lot of wear and tear. Um, you might not really need to do that on the side, but I would definitely do it for the, for the head. Um, we're going to be trying something. I had done this from the doll that I made, and I'm trying a slightly different way um, of doing this. Uh, Nikki had um, shown in her instructions a way of putting a, um, a wire armature into the body in order to make it a little bit more poseable. Um, I did, she calls for pipe cleaners. I did not have any pipe cleaners, but I did have a very soft metal. And I've actually made... So you can sort of see her diagrams, give dimensions, etc. I made one out of the soft metal um, following her directions. And then I got some batting and I wrapped the batting around the armature um, to hold it together, but also so we don't have any of those sharp metal points coming through. I had used pipe cleaners in my doll 
and um, unfortunately I had used black pipe cleaners and you could actually see a little bit of the shadow coming through because that's all I had and I'm an impatient person. I wanted to get it done. So um, we're going to uh, start to stuff her and I'm thinking with the wire armature what I'm going to do is just put a little bit of light stuffing in her feet and in her hands and then this is actually going to have to be sort of compressed down slipped in through the head and then opened within these within the arms and the legs you know this probably will be put in without the foot being turned up so it just goes straight down and then start to gently stuff through the head through the side around the armature making sure to get it into the, the front and the back so i'll get that started and then come back and show you some progress So the wire armature has been slipped into the body. It's a little tricky. You just have to make sure that, you know, it gets in there. And you probably can't really see it through here, but you know, the, the wire goes about, probably about to the elbow here in her arms. And we try to get it down as far as we can into the feet, but it really is just to like give her some flexibility and some stability. Well, she might even be able to stand a little bit. Um, so, you know, um, I'm using this polyester fiber fill and I ordered some cotton. It hasn't come here yet. And of course, as I said, I'm an impatient person, so I'm using the fiber fill. What I did want to show you is a little trick. Um, the hemostats are really great for getting the stuffing exactly where you want it to go in the body. So you're sort of like grabbing and you shouldn't be, a, you know, you want to do this using small pieces because you just don't want it to get clumpy and you're sort of working it down there into the legs and you can already see they're sort of taking shape. The um, the batting around the wire armature seems to help a little bit too in just giving it um, a little bit more, uh, let's say a skeleton. So one thing is if you're not using a wire armature, you know, you're going to want to stuff her pretty firmly. If you're using a wire armature, you want to, you know, stuff her just enough where she has a nice shape, but she can also still bend. I mean, you don't want her to be so rigid that you can't pose her if this is something that you want to do. So again, um, oh, I also didn't show you, I've basted the opening here because as you can see, the majority of the stuffing is going through the head and it would just have a lot of wear and tear on that part of the fabric if we didn't um, protect it a little bit. So as you're doing this, you know, you're basically moving the stuffing down into the body and you are sort of adjusting it, you know, pressing it in where you feel it needs to be a little bit firmer. Um, I probably will go down and like just make sure I get that little bit filled out here. Um, but basically, you can start to see her taking shape. Again, work with very small bits of your cotton or your fiber fill to make sure that you're not getting a lot of clumps. You know, again, I'm doing this rather quickly for you, show you how it can be done, but I probably would want to go a little bit slower and a little bit more careful. Okay, so I will continue to stuff her, uh, probably up until about this point, and then we'll close the side here with a ladder stitch. Uh, she's a kind of a flat doll. I mean, you're going to see that she's going to have a flat little face, but she's a cutie. And um, once I get her, uh, you know, more stuffed and possibly to the top of her head, I'll come back, show you how to close up her head. And then um, we'll move on to some little uh, finishing details. So I've skipped ahead a bit, and I just want to show you 
how you can really personalize or customize these little dolls. Here we have two dolls from exactly the same fabric kit. Um, the one on the left is the one that I was working on in this video with the wire armature that allows her to sort of be poseable. You know, she can blow you kisses or whatever. Um, and the doll on the right was the doll that I made when this first was offered by Carmel Doll Shop Boutique. So you can see there's some like differences here. You know, um, both of them, um, one of them's a little chunkier. Um, both of them have uh, applied ribbon um, in the in the instructions, um, Nikki basically says that you can run a ribbon through um, or on top of the ribbon that's printed on the on the dress and around the waist, and add a little bow. The same thing here, you can see that. Um, but the um, the faces have been treated a little differently. This one's been needle sculpted, and basically I took some small stitches in the corners of the eye and I pulled them towards the back just to try to give the face a little bit more um, three-dimensional quality. I added little gold bead earrings, and because I had pulled it through, I put a, there's some stitches on the back, I put a bow on the back, which would be pretty accurate in this period, but I didn't think that I wanted to add yet another element here because it just felt like it would be too much. Here, um, this face is Nita sculpted. I think her, her nose might be a little too strong for, for my liking, but um, needle sculpted and um, there's nothing on the back because I didn't pull the stitches through there. I pulled them together and then I pulled them up. So um, this one though has applied ribbon rosettes and a ribbon across the um, the top of the head and a, and a different colored ribbon. I mean, you could just have six of these in different colored ribbons like the, the Dion uh, quintuplets. Um, the hands on this one actually have also been um, a little needle sculpting in them where they've just had some anchoring stitches that, to define the, the fingers. Um, so two to very, uh, the same doll, but two different types of applications. I'm considering, um, maybe adding ribbons here, but I actually think it's just going to be a little bit too fussy, um, to have a ribbon on the front and a ribbon on the back. Not sure yet, but that's another option for you. So, um, two little dolls, uh, very, um, well, relatively different. Uh, and you can um, customize them however you want to, but these are just two suggestions from uh, Nikki Burley's great uh, Mary Marie uh, pattern offered by the Car Carmel Doll Shop Boutique. I'm going to move on to making some clothes for her, and then I will come back and I will show you those clothes. And um, first we'll start with a very simple um, petticoat, and then we'll move on to some dresses. So the great thing about this project is that little Marie already has um, her one piece undergarment on and all she really needs is a little petticoat. Now Nikki's uh, pattern or instructions say that you could use a piece of um, broderie anglaise or Swiss embroidery. Um, and basically it already has a finished scalloped edge and you're just attaching, gathering and attaching a waistband to it. Now, if you don't have that, you can always just use a straight piece of, in this case, I think it's a cotton voile. Um, you know, I've just hemmed the back and attached the lace with a straight stitch um, and then hemmed it on either side about one inch down. Uh, next step will be to gather the top, um, cut a waistband with additional an additional a quarter inch on each side to fit her waist, um, apply the waistband to the top of the petticoat, and finish the back with a seam and overcast it. So another thing I think that's really fun about this little doll is that, you know, I, I think, if I remember correctly, I think I did this all by hand. Um, I'm going to try to do the majority of this by machine. So, you know, you can basically 
um, work with machine or by hand. I think hand um, work for me is always preferable because I have more control over, especially with something this small. But machine really allows you to do it quickly. And they did use machine um, around this time, which was probably around 190, I don't know, 1904 or five, maybe a little later than that. Um, so I think if you're doing it by hand, you can put together a little selection of trim and um, and fabric, and you could take it with you. You know, make little packets, and you can do these things when you're traveling. All you really need is a travel iron to keep things. Um, you know, if you're doing things by hand, to keep things nice and crisp and and um, pressed. But um, in this case, I think it's kind of fun just to be able to do something. Um, you know, uh, rather quickly with a machine if you're comfortable with that or, you know, if you're a fast hand sewer by hand. So I'm going to finish up the petticoat and I'm going to then move on to her nightgown. So we'll see that in a little bit and I'll show you the finished petticoat um, in that next clip. Here's our finished petticoat. Very simple. You just need a approximately two and a half by nine inch wide um, piece of batiste or royal, a little piece to make your waistband, and a nine inch piece of lace. And then you've got this pretty little undergarment for her. Again, she's already wearing her chemise and her, um, her knickers. So you don't need to worry about those pieces. So we're gonna move on to the nightgown and the nightgown is actually cut in what's called the kimono style. Basically, you want to take your fabric and you want to fold it this way. And then you fold it again in half. So you have a double fold here and a double fold here. This is already cut, of course. You lay your pattern on here so your fold is here and your fold is here. You cut it out. And what you're going to get is... It's a really great trick. You're going to get a entire nightgown without having to sew any sleeve seams or shoulder seams. Um, for this one, we're actually going to slash the front down by about three inches. Let me just make sure that's right. Yep, three inches. And I'm gonna draw a little line here just to make sure that my Line is straight. And you hear my little dog. Of course, she has to have something to say. Um, this isn't probably as even as it should be. I'm gonna even that out a little bit more. I think it's probably like that. But since this is a Frixion pen, you know, you can just iron those marks out and it won't matter. So we're gonna slash this down. And then what we're going to do is we're gonna turn this opening to the right side by about an eighth of an inch. And you're going to see we're going to do the same thing on the sleeves, but we're going to turn it about a quarter of an inch to the right side. Why are we turning it to the right side? Because we're going to be overlaying a piece of lace on either side of this opening, covering that turn back and along the edges of the sleeves. And what you're basically going to have is a finished edge. Um, the, all the raw um, pieces, the raw edges are going to be hidden under the lace. So we're going to start that. Um, we're also going to bind the neckline and I'll show you how to do that, but it's very simple. Again, uh, you can use your machine for this. You can um, do this by hand, whatever you prefer, but it's a cute, it's going to be a cute little nightgown when it's done. Okay. I'll show you the next step in a bit. Here's our nightgown in progress. Just wanted to show you a couple of things before I move on. Again, we've slashed down the center from the neckline directly on the center front to about three inches. We've turned an eighth of an inch to the right side on each side of the slash. And then we've applied flat applied lace on either side. And we've sewn it down on each side of the lace with small stitches. We've turned up the sleeve um, edges quarter of an inch to the right side. And we've done the same technique where we applied the lace over. I've actually just used this lace in, in a slightly different way, just having it, you know, fall over the, um, the a little bit past that folded edge. And then we've taken a piece of bias that we've cut, 
this needs to be pressed. And we've um, pressed one long edge of it, probably about an eighth of an inch. We've sewn it to the neckline. I used about a quarter of an inch, maybe a little under a quarter of an inch seam allowance. We've turned it under and we have hemmed it in place. You know, this is the sort of thing, and then you can see the, the stitching here. This is the sort of thing I most likely would always do by hand, but if you really want to do this by machine, um, feel free. It's just so, um, it's such a fragile uh, fabric or thin fabric, it's not fragile, it's very strong. And then um, I like to cheat a little bit. Um, before the side seams are sewn together, I have folded the hem up. You know, you can always adjust this later because our next step is to match our arms and our side seams together and to sew those in place and then to trim and overcast them. We'll turn it inside out and press it, but this just gives you the opportunity not to have to fiddle with it after the sides have been sewn together. You might want to try this on your doll and see how it fits first, but um, this is what Nikki is calling for in her pattern. I believe an eighth of an inch and a quarter of an inch turnover. So um, I'm going to sew that up and then we're gonna show it to you finished and move on to her robe. Well, our nightgown is done. And as you can see, very simple the kimono cut no shoulder seams, just a very simple T-shape. It has two hooks and thread loops in the front. And I've made these little um, pink silk bows to put on the front. So it's very, very simple. You can do more with this. I mean, you could add lace to the bottom and, you know, have a lot more fun with it if you want. But uh, it's a very simple pattern, very easy to make. So looking at this, I knew I was going to, um, or the set I was going to go on to the robe. I thought I would go on to the bed jacket because I love this fabric from the Carmel Doll Shop Boutique. This is a Swiss cotton that has this little open weave. And I know this is a very pale pink, but I thought it would be very pretty if it was overlaid onto this. This bed jacket is cut in exactly the same way as the nightgown was. It is a kimono fold. So you cut it on a fold here and a fold here, rather double fold and fold. So you have this single piece. And then what you need to do is cut it in the front directly in the center down the bottom, down to the bottom. And then what we're going to do is we're going to sew with an eighth inch seam allowance all around the outside edge. We're gonna leave an opening here of about an inch and a half for turning. And then we're gonna turn it and clip, clip all of our curves and trim our seam allowances, turn it inside out. And then we will just add some simple ribbons as decoration. It's a very, very um, simple pattern. It's almost like a, like a pillowcase, if you can think of that. And then rather than being sewn under the arms, it's going to be um, tacked and then there will be ribbons under the arms. So it should hopefully turn out to be a little pretty, pretty outfit. I'm actually going to do something um, where I'm going to sew directly onto the lining without trimming the lining out just because I want to make sure that this aligns perfectly. And this just gives me the opportunity to, you know, not be worried about um, line up. So I will go off and do that and then come back and show you probably the, the finished product. So I've already shown you the nightgown that's finished. And now here is the little bed jacket. Um, Nikki's pattern actually calls for this to have feather stitching. Actually, she calls for it to be made out of wool with a silk lining. Actually, really, as I said, I really love this um, sort of open weave fabric from the Carmel Doll Shop Boutique. It kind of looks like it's knit to me and reminds me of sort of like a crochet work or something that was made that way. Um, I've actually was inspired by Nikki's uh, ribbon work on the doll itself to do some ribbon work on the jacket. It's very easy. I mean, there's a little lazy daisy. Uh, loop um, and it's just basically run in and out and then secured in the back. 
So, you know, these are just tiny little pieces. You know, you can use your scraps, have a lot of fun with them. But I think um, this little outfit um, with the nightgown and the, and the bed jacket or the uh, combing jacket, I think will look really pretty together. And there's going to be a night cap as well um, that I'll show you a little later. But now I'm going to move on to the robe. And I think as you can remember from some of the other pieces that we've done, this is cut in the kimono style. So again, there'll be no shoulder seams. It's just basically one piece of fabric and cut on that double fold that we had done before, um, cut down the middle, and then a little bit of shaping in the front. Now what we're going to do, this is probably going to be a little tricky and time consuming, is we're going to bind the edges. We're going to bind this around the neckline. We're going to bound, bind this, bind this. And then once it's sewn together, we're going to do a, um, a lace hem basically where you sew a piece of lace to the bottom edges here and here. And then you flip that lace up to the inside and you secure it with a little um, hem stitch there. I'll show you how that looks once we get into the binding and um, I will be back. Here is Mary Marie's little robe that we're working on. Just wanted to show this to you and show you a couple of things. Nikki's pattern calls for the edges of this robe to be bound using this technique where you iron your, your material in half or your ribbon in half, and then you sew one side of that with top stitching. Then you turn it over and you do a slip stitch on the back. You know, I, I like this technique. I think it's really beautiful, but I wanted to try something different. I wanted to try to do, well, the ribbon has no right side, but on the right side of your fabric to actually attach it along the seam edge, to turn it like a, like a bias binding, and then to wrap it on the side. So I would say this is gonna give you a smaller trim or a narrower trim rather, um, but I think they both have, um, you know, one is just a little bit smaller. Um, the other one I think has sort of a more, um, I don't know, like a, a more handmade type of feeling to it um, with that top stitching, which is really pretty. I just wanted to see how this works. The only thing I would say that is a little bit of a challenge probably with both of them is where you're going around curves because this ribbon is cut on the straight. It's not a bias material. I mean, if you really wanted to do this technique and have it be perfectly smooth around curves, I would cut a bias strip and sew a bias strip down. Well, the way that Nikki actually recommends it is as you're going around your curves, you have a second needle that's slightly gathering the, fat, the, the ribbon as you go around, so you're actually easing it. You know, I, I think that that's great. I would, love to, um, I would love to try that on something else, but I just wanted to try something a little different here. She also calls for, a, um, uh, for um, little holding straps for a belt um, on either side, but I kind of like the idea of like a very simple ribbon closure. So it's just gonna be tied very, you know, casually, it's very feminine. Um, and then the last thing I want to show you is the way that we would finish probably the majority of the hems in Mary Marie's um, trousseau. And that is just with a lace hem. And basically what you're doing is you're sewing your lace to the right side of the fabric and along the top heading, you probably have about a little bit of a quarter of an inch or three sixteenths overlap here. You're turning it to the inside and you're leaving just probably a little strip of the fabric showing. You don't wanna see any of that lace from the other side or you could if you want to do but that, use that as a decoration. But what you're going to basically do is then slip stitch 
along the short ends and along the long end. And that, you know, and then give it a good press and it's gonna look really pretty. It doesn't really add bulk. Um, I think it's a really nice way of actually using up lace that you might not normally want to use on a, another project because it's hidden. And this is just some insertion. I have a lot of this insertion. Uh, but I think you could probably use any lace that you, you want, um, that you like to use. So we're going to um, get this sewn, these ties sewn down and our, our hem done. And then um, we'll come back and show you uh, her nightcap. And that will pretty much finish up all of Mary Marie's sleepwear. So our last bit of lingerie is Mary Marie's nightcap. This is very, very simple to sew. And basically what you're doing is you're taking your pattern and you're not cutting on this line but you're marking on this line on your fabric, and then you're sewing on this line, and you're actually, um, like again, like a pillowcase, you're doing two layers. In this case, I did a voile over a little pink silk lining, but you can really use eyelid, an old handkerchief. Um, Nikki gives you some suggestions in the patterns, but basically you sew it together, turn it inside out, um, slip stitch the open and closed um, press and then run a ruffled piece of lace around the edge whipping it in place and then do a little running stitch about an eighth of an inch in and finish it up with a little bow in the front and you know she has a little she has kind of an oddly shaped head um, Mary Murray she's more like a little football head um, so you just have to sort of make sure that you try it on her and that it fits and you can adjust your your gathers and there she is in her little her little nightcap and little lingerie cap so here we have her full series of um, night things her little, her night dress, her little um, bed jacket, and her robe. And these are all fun projects, again, that you can, you know, sew by hand, sew by machine, use up your little scraps. Um, these are all fabrics and trims from the Carmel Doll Shop Boutique. So if you have anything left from a, a project, you just need a tiny little bit and you can make her this lingerie set. So this is a fun little dress to make. It's a square neck dress, and it's going to be cut in the kimono style that we had looked at before. I've got to clean up that little edge. <laughs> um, basically, you know, the kimono style again is cut on a double fold. So you have one piece. You know, some um, chemises I think have been cut like this for earlier dolls. Um, but what we're going to do now is we're going to put a placket um, on the back of the dress. So this is something that Nikki um, gives really great instructions for. You're going to cut a little strip of fabric. You're going to find the center of it. I think this is about two and a half inches. This might be about three and three quarters by, I think, one. Um, but check the instructions. And then you're going to sew on either side close to the middle Edge. So you're sewing down one side, you're taking maybe one or two stitches here, and then you're sewing up the other side. And then you're going to clip it very carefully between the two sewn seams. And then you're going to take a tiny little clip in the corner so it turns easily. You're going to turn the whole thing inside out, or rather to the wrong side, this is the right side. And you're going to um, turn under the hem on three sides and hem it very cleanly. And you've got this like really nice little, um, very nice little finished um, opening, little placket. I just wanted to show you a little dress that I made for my Mary Marie um, following this pattern. I did not put the streamers on, but we're going to make this in the striped fabric and I thought it might be kind of fun to try to do a little sailor suit since those were so popular in the early 20th century. So I'm going to try to do a little sailor suit out of this one and um, once the placket's done I'm going to show you how we apply um, the square or the, 
the trim on all um, all edges of the the neckline and on the sleeves as well. So we're going to get to that and I'll show you the next step. So we're working on the square neck dress and I just want to show you this is what the placket looks like from the wrong side. So basically, again, it was sewn to the face um, on either side of the center line. The center line was clipped, little clips down at the bottom. Then it was turned inside out or to the wrong side and it was hemmed in place. So we've also um, put the uh, cuff facings on. And just to show you how that's done, we're on the wrong side here. We've put uh, the right side of the cuff to the wrong side of the fabric. We've sewn it, we've turned it over. We've also turned in the seam allowance or a little bit of the seam allowance at the top. I might wanna even that out a little bit. Um, and we're going to uh, stitch it down to the face and then give it a good press. So because this is a sailor dress, I'm probably going to do a little bit of soutache or something on top of this cuff before it, the sleeves are sewn together. Um, and then we've run two lines of gathering stitches uh, to the front of the dress and to the back. Uh, there's gonna be a little overlap there. And basically what we're going to do now is we're going to apply the collar facing so it's very similar to what we did for the um, for the cuffs. We're going to work from the wrong side of the fabric and we're going to pin it in position. And then it's actually going to be mitered when we turn it over. So you're going to make these little tiny snips in the corners of the neckline that'll allow you to, um, to sew this down. And then once we turn it over, I'll show you how we'll finish it on the front side. Probably we'll do a little bit more um, in terms of the decoration at that point too, just to sort of condense this a little bit. So let's um, go and do those steps and I'll be back to show you uh, the next steps. So we're finishing up that little square neckline dress. And I just want to show you sort of the versatility of these patterns. This could really be um, any sort of contrasting uh, collar and um, and sleeve trim. Um, your, your sash could be a contrasting color. In this case, I thought it would be really cute to make her a little sailor um, dress because those were so popular, again, at the um, turn of the century and even before. So just to show you sort of how, you know, this has been sewn as a facing to the back, turned over, and then sewn in place. Um, I've covered that with a little bit of soutache trim, but um, you could top stitch that, you could stop top stitch along the top. I've actually done a little um, gathered whip stitch at the top, just because I felt like it was a little bit too loose on her. Um, you know, Unlike some of these other dolls, these are very simple patterns, but you still really need to fit as you're going along. Um, you know, there's going to be a little bit of variation in the actual stuffed doll, but also just to make sure that it's a good fit. And I'm in the process of putting in um, thread loops and hooks and eyes at the neckline and at the waist. Um, we've done a constructed bow, which is actually four separate pieces. Uh, is that right? Four, yes. Um, one is this piece. All of these dimensions are provided in the instructions. Um, basically, uh, your your loops are one piece, your center knot is one piece, and then your streamers are two pieces. Um, and these are actually um, sewn uh, back to back and then turned inside out. So you have a nice finished edge. Um, the waist has been gathered in to fit the doll, and then we've uh, put a little um, uh, cotton tape on the inside to anchor those gathering stitches just to give it a little bit more strength. Again, all of this needs to be fit to the doll. When I ran the 
um, gathering stitches, I actually put it on the doll, um, you know, approximated the overlap or the closure in the back, and then pulled up those gathering stitches um, to fit her waist. She's, this one's a little chunky, so she's got a little bit of a, a broader waist. And then I'm thinking maybe as a last finishing step, because I think it would really be cute, is maybe put um, a row of soutache along the, the skirt bottom. You know, here our, our hem is a um, is actually that lace turnip hem, um, which is really nice because it gives you a nice um, thin hem and a, and a, and a flat hem. Um, so I might put that over the hemline. I just have to sort of think about it and you sort of look at it and see what looks good to you. But it's a cute little dress, um, very, very easy to make. And then as you can see, you know, you can embellish it as much as you want. Um, I did say, uh, you know, there's a, you have the possibility of doing contrast and collar and, and, um, and cuff trim, but you could also top stitch if you wanted just to add a little bit more color or finish. Uh, and there we go. So I'm going to apply the soutache and then we're going to move on to looking at the tucked dress. A little wrinkled pattern, but um, I'm going to show you how we put this together. So I will see you in a bit. So we're going to start on the tuck dress. And just something that maybe I wasn't very clear about in the instructions as I was reading them. I believe that this reads as though this is the diagram for your tucks. Now, if you were to do this, and apologies, um, Nikki, if I get this wrong, just let me know. But if you were to actually tuck this as it's drawn, and let me just see, I was just folding it just to see. Let's see, let's do another tuck here. I'm not doing a very good job. Let's do it like this. Okay, and then do another tuck. I don't think this is I don't think this is meant for you to use as a as a guide. I may be totally wrong about that, but when I look at this, which is actually your your other pattern for the tuck dress, and I measure it here, it's not lining up. So what I think is that you need to create a pre-tucked piece of fabric which is maybe that's what the directions are saying, and I'm just too dense to follow that, but you're gonna create a pre-tucked piece of fabric. Um, Nikki has given you a dimension for that center um, panel of tucks, and that's one inch, and I've done a quarter inch tuck on either side of that. So basically, if you sort of look at it here, you've got a full, a full width that you can work with. And if you lay this here, it lines up almost exactly. So again, that was my interpretation of it, but perhaps you know of a different way or Nikki can correct me. Um, one thing that you do wanna do is that before you do make your tucks, you're gonna to want to mark on your fabric um, your two waistline areas. And the reason why you're going to do that is that the tucks between these two lines, the waistline, are gonna be sewn down. Below the waistline, you're going to baste. And there's a reason for that. You're going to open, uh, you're gonna remove the basting and you're going to hem this and then you're going to repress it when it's done. So these will be um, sort of like looser pleats at the bottom. So tucks here, sewn down tucks here, and then basted pleats here. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is using this as my guide and matching up the waistline and the center of the fabric. And this um, this fabric is great because it it's probably not the best one to show you this on because there's so many verticals and so many um, checks and things you really can't see the tuck so it probably would be really pretty in something which was not uh, didn't have such a d dense pattern um, but I'm just going to mark where the collar opening is or the neck opening rather. And I'm gonna stay stitch, um, probably about an eighth of an inch away from that edge. Um, the reason why I'm doing is that we're going to then cut that out 
and we're going to then also cut out our entire our entire dress using this pattern. It's going to be the same principle as the um, square collared dress. We're going to do a placket in the back. So we're going to do that same overlay. I think it was three inches by one and three quarters about. Um, we're going to stitch down the, uh, rather we're going to mark the center of that. And we're going to stitch very close to that center line on either side. And then we're going to uh, move that placket or bring that placket to the back of the dress and um, hem it in place like we did for the square neck dress. So let me um, go off and do that and I will show you the next step which will hopefully be how we treat the collar of this dress which we're going to use this very um, pretty blue silk uh, from Carmel Doll Shop for. So here is the next phase of the tuck dress. Um, we have turned the neck um, seam allowance up to the right side by about an eighth of an inch and base it in place. We've put our placket in the back and I'm in the process of turning up the sleeves by an eighth of an inch and doing a little simple hem there, which will be the next thing we do. But I also want to just show you this kind of really nice way that Nikki has of finishing this. We're going to be top stitching a band of, in this case, silk to the front. We're going to top stitch along the, the top of this and along the bottom of this. And we're going to sort of miter that will be a little cleaner than that um, on the on the sides and miter it in the front. So we've got a nice sharp edge there. And that's really going to be our our neck trim. There is no trim, at least in this design, um, there is no trim on the sleeve cuffs, but you could do another little band of silk. Maybe I, I might actually do that. Um, I also thought rather than do another sort of waistband here, it might be kind of fun just to do two little tabs on either side because that's a very sort of turn of the century or early 20th century um, sort of children's and uh, ladies dress detail where you have those little tabs um, rather than having a full belt. I think that might be kind of pretty. So I uh, will go off and do that and then come back and show you the final product. So here's the tuck front dress all done. I just want to show you um, Nikki's pattern called for just a, a hem on the sleeve and I just thought it needed a little bit more color. So I bound the sleeves like we did with the neckline. Um, the neckline is actually uh, top stitched on the top and the bottom, a little miter in the front, and we've just top stitched along the top of that cuff. Very simple little dress, like a little everyday um, play dress. Um, I think I probably have to give this another good pressing or steaming uh, to get the pleats to set a little bit, but it's, um, it's a cute little dress. Nikki's pattern calls for a sash to go all the way around, but I sort of thought that this sort of has this feeling of that time for some reason, this sort of like little side, um, side belts. So I thought I would try that. And the other dress she has, has um, a nice uh, sash to it, the sailor dress. So we're going to move on to the um, the blouse, and I'm going to show you how we sort of prepared this. It's very um, it's very simple. Again, kimono cut, um, one piece. We've slashed it down the the bottom, and then we've turned up. I left this one undone so you could see it. We've turned up the the um, sleeve edge to the right side by an eighth of an inch and we've done that on the sides of the back opening and we've also done it around the collar and then we have applied um, flat lace this one was gathered a little bit in the corner so it would curve well and sewn that down on each edge 
Um, we've done the same thing on the back edges and we'll do the same thing on this side as we've done on this side. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is that before we sewed the lace onto the neckline, we applied three rows of insertion lace on the front. And you could use whatever kind of lace you want as long as I think, as long as it has a one straight edge. Um, insertion is good because it's sort of symmetrical on both sides, but you could do a lot with this um, little pattern. Uh, this is in cotton net. Um, it could be made in Batiste, it could be made in a stripe, um, you know, a pattern, uh, pattern fabric, whatever um, you think looks prettiest. But I think it's a very effective and simple little, um, little blouse. So I'm going to um, keep working on this and show it to you when it's finished on the doll. And um, we will be back. So Marie's blouse is done. Um, as you can see, I did a little channel hem at the bottom and ran a ribbon through that to draw it up at the waist. I think during this period, they sort of had that little, you know, pouting pigeon, I think they called it, but a little droopy um, ness up in the front or fullness in the front. And then um, closed the top with a button and a button loop, uh, thread loop and then ran a gathering stitch around the cuff and with the blouse on the doll, and make sure you try this on over her petticoat, um, with the blouse on the doll, pulled up the gathering stitches and tied them off to fit her little hands. So she is ready for a party dress, I think. I'm gonna move on to the puff sleeve dress and I will be right back with you. So we've begun to work on the puffed sleeve dress. The puffed sleeve dress is a little different than the rest in this series of patterns. It actually has separate sleeves, but we do have, um, again, the kimono cut front and back. Um, we've taken the center and we've put in our placket and we've gathered up the front between a uh, neckline between these two points, they're all indicated on the pattern, and the back between these two points. And so what we're gonna do next, there are a couple of things. We're going to um, add the sleeves and the sleeves are gonna be added. There's a double row of gathering that's been sewn at the top. And we're gonna fit these sleeves to the sleeve cap, or sleeve the, the armhole opening. We're gonna stitch them in place before we did that though, and I think this might be a little hard to see on camera, we've taken the um, sleeve edge, we've folded it up on the towards the right side by about an eighth of an inch and pressed it, and we've um, overlaid a piece of lace on top of that. And then, just to make it a little easier, um, this needs to be gathered, and so rather than putting those stitches in later, I've put those stitches in now, a double row of st gathering stitches on the header of the lace. And once the seam is, the sleeve is sewn um, into place and the underarm seam and side seam are sewn, we're going to put that on the doll and we're going to fit it to her. So um, that's, it's pretty much a very, very simple pattern, I think. Um, Maybe the trickiest thing here might be the um, binding of the neckline, but even that's not going to be really difficult. It's just something you just have to do with rather small stitches. And then really the rest of it is in gathering up the waist, um, hemming, applying lace, um, both to the, the front and to the, the hem. And, um, and I'll show you those steps in our next clip. So here is the finished puff sleeve dress. It has that sort of fashionable um, pigeon uh, breast <laughs> feature in the front. Um, very, very simple again, uh, just three pieces. The front and the back are one piece and then these two um, inset sleeves. Um, everything is trimmed with this Val lace here, um, this lovely voile and the lace are all from the Carmel doll shape shop boutique as is the the ribbon in her hat and the hat is also very very simple to make it's just a circle of fabric that's been gathered 
with gathered um, Swiss embroidery around it. And then I've added some silk ribbons and trim to match the dress. So she's ready for a garden party. So we will move on to her outdoor jacket or coat uh, with a little capelet and a hood. And we'll see you then. This is a great design by Nikki for a caped hooded coat. Um, cut very much in the same way as uh, has been uh, cut with the other patterns in that kimono style. Um, in this case, I've slashed it down the middle. It has a, um, a shoulder cape and it has a little hood. Um, in this case, I'm using uh, this really, really pretty lightweight wool from the Car Carmel Doll Shop Boutique. It actually has two different colors. You know, I'm not sure. Maybe this gray I might use. I sort of like the little warmer tone, but that might be a prettier side. <laughs> and I don't know which side is the right side. I think it might be the one with more texture. So these are the components, really. It's very, very simple. There are no sleeves. Um, this is going to be a bound um, armhole. And basically, there's no lining. Everything is going to be bound either with straight pieces of, um, of uh, silk that you're going to need to cut, and all of the dimensions are in her patterns um, and instructions, um, or by a small bias piece that I believe <coughs> will be used to go around the neck. So no lining, no bulk. Um, it's got this great little feature of a dart that will create that sort of shoulder slope. Uh, and very, very simple to put together. I think the fun will be in um, adding some trim and perhaps some decorative buttons or whatever you really want to um, that feels appropriate for this time period. So I will start to put these pieces together and show you the next step. And hopefully that next step will be, <coughs> excuse me, binding uh, the fronts, um, binding the armholes, um, perhaps putting together the cape and the hood, and then how to assemble those separate components, and then finally how to trim the caped coat. Here's progress on our caped coat. It's basically three pieces that have been um, made up separately, and then they're all going to be joined at the neckline. So you have your sleeveless coat. Um, we have gathered it in the back, put a little bit of a, a belt there. It's bound with uh, black silk that's been cut on the straight and applied to the front, then turned over. So you have that bound edge and I've also applied some of the Pico trim to the edges. The uh, arms and the hem are just simply bound with lace very, very easy, um, as we've done with the other dresses that Nikki has designed. And then um, the separate little hood, it's the same treatment. Uh, in this case though, I've put some Pico on the inside and the outside, just so it feels a little bit more finished when it's open. I've also blanket stitched the edges. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to attach the hood to the capelet and to the coat. These two have already been attached. And basically what we've done is we've gathered the cape around the neckline. And we've matched it to the inside uh, or to the, rather to the neckline itself of the coat. And we're going to do the same thing with the hood, but we're gonna make sure that the center line is exactly in the center of the coat when we do this. And then we're going to sew this all together with one piece of bias and neatly turn it over into the inside and hem it on the inside. And I think that probably the, you know, Nikki calls for buttons going down the front um, and three uh, hooks and eyes uh, as a closure. But I'm thinking that there are these great little clasps that I bought from the Carmel Doll Shop Boutique that I think one would really be cute up there. And then um, perhaps add a little tassel to the back of the, the, the hood. So when it's down, it has a little bit of a, you know, whimsical quality to it. So I will get that going 
and come back and show you the finished coat. So here's her caped and hooded coat, a little piece of fluff there, let me get rid of that, um, done. And the little clasp that I was talking about that's available through the boutique, you know, this little tassel on the back is, is really, I think it's really cute. I'm going to put a little gold bead in there. You know, she can wear her hood up or down but she is ready for a promenade in the park. So that is the last item in her wardrobe. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this and that you have fun with her. She's just a, such a, a cute little doll to work with and to, you know, bring about with you when you travel because she's just the right size. She's not going to set off any metal detectors when you go through or detectors when you go through the security at the airports. Um, and she's just a lot of fun. Well, she might actually because she's got some metal in her body, but who knows? Uh, I'll try the next time I travel. But um, thank you for watching this and I hope that you enjoy her and um, create a huge wardrobe for her from these wonderful patterns um, by Nikki Burley for the Carmel Doll Shop Boutique. Thank you. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit that notification button.